And that decision by Donald Trump put the U.S. in a group which also features Nicaragua and Syria as non-signatories of the Paris Climate Accord. And of course, that announcement went down very badly in some quarters, including with Chancellor Merkel. This is what she said on the subject last week. The European Union unconditionally stands by its agreement in Paris and will implement it rapidly and decisively. Since the U.S. decision to leave the Paris Climate Agreement, we are more determined than ever to make it a success. We cannot and will not wait for the scientific evidence to convince every last doubter. The Paris Agreement is irreversible and cannot be renegotiated. Well, the Paris Agreement features a number of commitments. The headline one is to aspire to keeping the world's temperature to within two degrees of the pre-industrial level. And in fact, the true ambition is to reach for it to be one and a half degrees above pre-industrial level. On top of that, there's a commitment to measuring all signatories' emissions every five years. And there was a commitment to climate finance. This is richer countries giving money to developed country, developing countries so they can take on climate change without losing out economically. But there are an awful lot of questions about what the US not being part of this is going to mean in practice. Let's get some help. Nick Mavie is joining us from London, chief executive of E3G, which is a non-profit organization which looks at sustainable development and climate change policy. Nick, thank you for your time today. First of all, what do you think can be achieved here at the G20, given that America is stepping out of climate change discussions? Well, surprisingly enough, uh, what's going to happen at the G20 is more important not for what Trump's going to do. We know what he's done. He's left Paris. What's more important is to see how other countries react. We know where Europe is. We know where Japan is. But will the other um, 19 countries pull together, reconfirm Paris, um, and then do more, step forward to actually pledge to reform parts of their economy to deliver on Paris. So the first thing we're looking for is um, not humiliating or isolating the U.S., but leaving the U.S. to one side and the other 19 pledging to take Paris forward. Well, if we look at the top three emitters in the world, it's India in third, the U.S. in second, and China in first. Given that the second biggest emitter is stepping away from Paris, what's that likely to mean for the impact that the global effort can have on reducing emissions? Well, luckily, the actual the federal government in America is not um, in charge of American emissions, funny enough. It's the state of America who control um, a lot of the around what power to build, how efficient to make houses, um, what kind of cars to drive. So, at the moment, the U.S. was drawing what will make a lot of difference in the real economy. It's more a political impact. The interesting thing is we've seen India, in particular, um, start to say we're not going to burn coal, um, they're not like Trump, they're going to move to use solar power and committed to have only electric vehicles from 2030. So since Trump's announcement, we've actually seen some of the big emitters like India and China as well recommitting to more clean energy. Um, and the simple fact is they're big energy importers, they don't want to be dependent on the Middle East or on energy imports, and they think there's money to be made in clean technology. They may not have oil at home, but they can make solar panels and wind farms, and that's an economic advantage. Nick, talk to me about your aspirations for the G20. Realistically, what are you hoping to hear in those press conferences on Saturday? Well, what we'll be looking really carefully at, is, um, as well as the reference to Paris, is whether the G20 is seriously agreeing to take forward and implementing Paris in their economies. You know, Paris is about climate, the G20 is about the economy. And we want to see every country say, we're going to have a proper national plan to make our economy zero carbon by 2050 with a date that's going to come out. We want them to say we're going to cut fossil fuels and give a, a subsidies to fossil fuels and give a much tighter timetable on that. Um, make sure they start moving money out of dirty fuels and into clean fuels. And particularly, there was a big report came out just before the summit saying that all companies should disclose how much carbon they use and their exposure to climate change so investors can decide where to put their money based on real evidence. Um, if the G20 endorses that report, that's a huge signal to markets and investors that this is serious and they should start moving their money. So those are some of the benchmarks we want to see, um, that they're taking this Nick, seriously. It's easy to pledge to stay in Paris. Nick, I'm going to see them do something. Nick, I'm going to...
Nick, I've got to jump in there because I'm right up against the end of the programme. Thank you very much for your contributions. That's it for this edition of Outside Source, but I'll be back with you live from Hamburg in 30 minutes here on BBC World News.